Hey guys, today is July 4th, another one of them hot, steamy days out here. Kind of doing something a little bit different than I did last year for July 4th. I spent most of the day picking vegetables, shucking corn. Uh, this year I'm going to concentrate a little bit on uh, some planting. This garden behind me is where I had this 10 rows of snaps and the row of squash at. I've mowed that stuff down now, uh, tilled it up, getting my rows laid off. I'm going to try to do some planting this year on the 4th as opposed to so much picking. The first thing I want to do is talk about last night. I had mentioned the uh, the radio show with Bear Prepper on uh, PrepperBroadcasting.com. That was a lot of fun last night. About an hour and a half of uh, talking with different people that I knew from uh, YouTube, their comments and things like that. But to be able to uh, talk to them person to person on the phone, so to speak, that was pretty cool. There was a lot of very good questions in there. Uh, some that made me think, as I said before, I'm not a horticulture expert. I don't have those degrees, sheepskins, all that kind of stuff. I just have what I know in front of me. And what I want to do right now is go over those questions and show you firsthand and talk about why I gave the answers that I did. Most of y'all know Paula, Allen2045. She asked a very good question about reusing pot and mixes and what did I do with this stuff. And in the past, uh, what I would do a lot of time is just take these grow bags and uh, dump them in the garden. But as I've looked at it and thought about it, uh, there's a lot of money that goes into buying that pot and mix and stuff. And it makes sense to me to try to get another uh, run of a crop out of it. So what I'm going to do is take these bags right here. I'll bring the backhoe around here and just dump all the bags in the front bucket, mix them up. I'll mix some more compost in it and I'll throw some cottonseed meal, the bone meal, and uh, whatever type of nutrients I think of at the time to try to get some stuff in there to uh, allow these things to grow for a longer time without me trying to supplement them. Some slow release stuff I think would be very good to have in there. When you go to the store and whatever your brand uh, pot and mix is, uh, it's not going to be cheap either way. And being able to get uh, multiple uses out of it, at least two uses, uh, would basically cut your cost in half and make it a lot more affordable for most people. After I finish up this second run with this uh, mix, uh, then I'll probably go ahead and uh, dump it outside in the garden or maybe in one of the raised beds or something like that. But I want to get at least one more use out of this mix before I'm done with it. Another very good question that was asked, and I didn't even have to pause on this one whatsoever. I knew exactly what the answer was. If there was one plant that I could learn how to grow or I hadn't been able to grow, what would it be? And it would be this right here. These Moringa. I have read everything about them. I know that it would be beneficial if I could get these things in the big bushes and just come by and be able to get the leaves off by the handfuls and dry these things out with the vitamins and minerals and nutrients that are in these things. Uh, it would be very good for me to be able to do that. So I'm not really feeding them a whole lot. They're from a you know, desert climate, so they don't need much. I try to give them a little bit of water, but not too much. As far as keeping the uh, mites off of them, I'll take the hose and spray up under these things real good and just try to keep everything disrupted so they never get back in charge again. This one over here has the flowers coming on it, growing kind of crooked, almost looks like a bonsai tree growing over there. And this one, this is, this is the prettiest one right here. That's a really nice looking little tree, but you see, I don't have a lot of growth to it. It is very hot in here and that should be what they want. But I'm not going to give up on them. Uh, they look pretty good right now, so I'm going to stick with it and see if I can't do a better job. But that would be the one plant that I would want to try to be able to grow. I was asked this question, basically in a worst case scenario, if I had to pick three items uh, that I would not want to be caught without uh, as far as helping my garden, what would those be? And one of them is something that I think the first one is something that I don't have right now that I really, really need to get and that would be chickens. If you're going to grow a garden, I think the biggest thing that you need is some way to fertilize that soil. Having chickens would allow me to take the chicken manure and whatever I had else bedding mixed in with it, whether it be straw, wood chips, or whatever I had chose to put in there, whatever I had, and get that, put that on my garden to be able to make the garden grow, to grow vegetables to feed me, and I could take the excess out of the garden, use that to feed the chickens. Uh, if they were layers and were laying eggs, I would get the eggs from it. If they weren't, uh, it might not be a bad idea to just have them for the manure. Ideally, I would like to have a source of horse manure. Y'all know that. 
But for me to bring horses around here and try to feed a big whatever two ton horse or whatever they weigh, trying to uh, grow or just get some manure, that wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. So I would start number one with chickens and chicken manure and being able to fertilize the garden. Number two would probably involve neem or some other uh, insecticidal soap, something that you can mix up a solution and make your own insect spray with. Uh, what I try to do, whatever you're doing any kind of prepping, you need to try to look at things that serve a multiple purpose. If you have something like neem oil, it's a good insecticide and does a real good job. It's, it has some uh, fungicide uh, assets to it also to help with the uh, powdery mildew and things like that. And it says also a miticide. Uh, I think it may have helped a little bit down there on those uh, Moringa. I haven't put a whole lot on them because uh, I didn't want to coat the leaves with a bunch of oil. Some other things that you can do, you know, as far as oils go, you can use Murphy's Oil Soap. Uh, that does a pretty decent job. Or a lot of people just use a Dawn dishwashing liquid. And the thing I would say about Dawn, it does a good job, uh, like the uh, neem, of suffocating the little smaller insects. A lot, of, a lot of insects just don't like it. Plus, if you're in a situation where you don't have the ability to, uh, to get insecticides to spray on your garden, that means you're going to be a whole lot of going down the road, picking bugs off and squishing them in your hand, and you're going to need something to wash your hands with. That dawn will take it off there real quick. One more thing that will serve uh, multiple purposes is baking soda right here. Everybody knows by now a tablespoon of baking soda and a gallon of water to help uh, some of your blight problems. Again, with blight though, the, one of the most important things is just to uh, maintain those plants properly. Get the leaves up off the ground, all your tomato leaves, get them off the ground. Uh, clean up the inside, let that plant get some air, and try to keep the leaves as dry water from the bottom. But if you do get blight, you can use baking soda to help control that. Keeping in mind with the multiple purposes of the baking soda, you're going to use your baking soda in the kitchen. Uh, somebody's going to be in the house or maybe out on the wood stove or in the oven there then, uh, doing some baking. They're going to need some baking soda. And also, if the crap has hit the fan and we're living off of a whole bunch of beans and rice, Y'all know what happens when you eat a whole lot of beans. Might be a good idea to have a little bit of baking soda to put in that pot of beans and uh, tone down that gas just a little bit. One more thing on the Dawn, Murphy's Oil, stuff like that, any kind of soap mixture, if you can mix it in with uh, something else, some other insecticide or something that you make up yourself maybe, uh, maybe your pepper spray, it's going to help that uh, compound stick to the leaves a whole lot better and make it a lot more effective. These are some Trinidad scorpions right here, and I could take just a few of these, mix it up, and make me some pepper spray, and put a little bit of that Dawn dishwashing liquid in there and spray it on the plants. Uh, not only would it deter the insects, but I don't think there would be any deer or rabbit coming wanting to eat some uh, pepper-laced lettuce. I don't think they would mess with it. A lot of people have problems with squash bugs, and generally, they'll wait till they see the uh, eggs being laid on top of the leaves, this row of squash down here looks really good. I don't see any squash bugs whatsoever. But if you see them laying eggs up on the leaves, it doesn't do much good to come in and spray this surface right here. What you need to do is get your spraying down here at the trunk of this plant. That's where those squash bugs are going to be hanging out at. They'll be down there mating and doing their little thing. If you're going to do some spraying, uh, you're better off open this thing up and do it down there the first uh, you know 10 inches or so down there right at the base of the plant soak that really good with whatever your choice of insecticide is and that will help out a whole lot with those squash bugs another thing that you can do like i mentioned last night i've seen navajo paw 31 do the same thing if you have the ability to do it come in here and water the bottom of these things real good especially cucumbers uh, smaller leaves where you can see exactly what's going on flood the bottom with water and every insect that's on the ground is going to come up to the top trying to dry off and when they come up to the top you just nail them then same thing with the vine borer that you if you have to deal with that spray and soak the trunk of that plant and you'll have a lot more success a couple more questions real quick uh, as far as what type of growing somebody should do uh, what would be best in the ground or raised bed hydroponic whatsoever i'll say this uh, mankind will never be able to beat 
growing directly in the ground. That's the way God made it to be, and you will always be able to grow better quality vegetables directly in the soil, especially if you have took the time to put something natural back into that and gotten it composted very well. So whether it be 200 foot long rows out there in the field or raised beds in your backyard, if you've got good soil in it, that will always be the best way to go. However, I really like hydroponics, uh, being able to just almost automate it. The vegetables, the lettuce and the tomatoes that I grew had very good taste to them. There's some question about maybe they don't have quite the nutritional value that uh, soil based plants have and I'd have to agree, you know, this, it makes sense but as far as taste goes they were extremely good. And when you're in a situation where you're simply just trying to feed people, hydroponics makes a lot of sense. If you've got nothing but a concrete backyard or a patio or something, if you're in a, a, a townhouse, apartment, and you don't have room for a yard, you can set up a little Dutch bucket system, maybe some uh, deep water culture, rails or whatever, and you can grow a decent amount of food in a very small space. Same thing with grow bags and containers and things like that. You got to just basically look at the space that you have or whatever you have to work with and figure out which one of those methods is going to allow you to optimize everything that you have and get the most production out. Again, thanks to everybody who stopped by last night. I know it's a holiday weekend and folks are busy, but uh, that was pretty cool. I enjoyed it. Had a lot of fun there. This is some of the things that we talked about. As I said, I'm not an expert on this stuff. I can only tell you what I have learned by playing in the soil and getting these two hands dirty right here. Y'all take care, and Lord willing, I'll see you next time.